Um, welcome back, everyone. It's my pleasure to um, announce the second keynote talk, which is by uh, Mr. Fabrizio Renzi. Um, well, actually, that's not really true. There's a small lie in the, in the program because we actually have three speakers for the second keynote. So it's Mr. Fabrizio Renzi, Director of Technology and Innovation at IBM Italy. Um, I heard he's not here yet, but he will be arriving soon. But we also have Mr. Pietro Leo, who is the Chief Scientist of IBM Italy, and Ms. Giulia Plotti, who um, did her master thesis um, at IBM. Um, so we will get an overview of all the nice applications that um, IBM has on sports. Okay, thank you. Yes, probably I will be, let's say, will be complimented by Julia here. And uh, we are going to, to tell, let's say, what we are doing in, uh, in, uh, in combination with sport, but uh, as uh, uh, probably you are able to, let's say, to read from the, from the title, is not only sport, but the combination with the sport with other things. In our case, will be health, will be health, and well-being in a general perspective. So our idea is to provide you an, some sort of a landscape, landscape perspective of, about what we are doing and for which reason IBM is doing that, this kind of things into the sports and uh, which kind of, uh, let's say, return investment we think useful and possible in sport-related area for IBM. The market of sport is probably, I guess, a number of you know very well. Is a, approximately at the global scale about 800 billion dollars. No? Then apparently is not a niche market, it's a big market. But it is important to, to see it from the right perspective. And uh, let's, so let's start. When I start to, to begin, uh, let's say, typically uh, to describe uh, the kind of analysis that, and the kind of a project that uh, we are able to do now, and, and in particular, all of you probably are hearing about the, the spring of artificial intelligence that with, the, with the several names. No? In, our, in our house, it, this, in IBM house, this is called the cognitive computing. Uh, in other, uh, other used to, to call this a smart machine, a number of things. But there is an interesting, let's say, uh, um, let's say, interesting from the companies to apply advanced analysis techniques, not only, let's say, statistical or uh, optimization techniques, but also extend the, the options that we have in analyzing data uh, to provide a number of insights to individuals, to teams, to companies, and so on and so on. So when I start to, uh, to, uh, to describe to a customer which are the potential of this kind of a uh, market or this kind of opportunity, I used to start with this very small example. That is how to renew something that is uh, quite common, like a toothbrush. No? And uh, if you think to a toothbrush, no, a toothbrush could be, it's quite common in the, during last, uh, I don't know, how many centuries we, we used this tool. And the first one purpose, and the purpose is to clean more or less our teeth. But uh, if you change the perspective and you put it, uh, your shoes into the, like uh, this kid shoes, like 10 years old, probably the, the perspective will change. Yes, the priority number one is probably, could it be another one at that age? Could it be to play? No? And if you change the priority, you can also change the reason for which uh, I can use the toothbrush, obtain the main result that is clean the teeth, but also satisfy the first priority of this, uh, of this boy. I'm going to wipe you out, monster. I'll brush you. I couldn't believe it at first. He's having fun while brushing oh. his teeth. I got him Grush, the world's first interactive smart toothbrush. I can play video games while I'm brushing. The better I brush, the higher my score. Grush transforms boring brushing into a fun game. I have a magic toothbrush. It beats up all the monsters in my mouth. Grush helps my son build good brushing habits 
by guiding him to reach all four quadrants of the mouth. When he brushes, I'll know immediately. The app helps me know how well he's done each day. No more battles over brushing. Now he's brushing. Brush with brush. I don't know if this is a small company. They used to sell this toothbrush for $50, no? I don't know if they will, uh, let's say, um, they, they will win against Procter and Gamble or something. But the important thing, the story behind this, is that just a, a couple of guys just made this. Just working and combining even advanced things like pattern recognitions into the, uh, embedded into the toothbrush, connection with uh, something uh, uh, where the computation workload were placed, like the cloud, to put the rest of the computation. But uh, let's say, let's think in these terms. So something is uh, changing, like changing the toothbrush from a traditional to this new advanced fancy toothbrush in something like uh, um, we are moving from, uh, let's say, uh, like uh, as written into the slide, counting score or making strategies to so collect data to make precise decisions. No? The, those precise decisions, thanks to data, thanks to the technology, uh, thanks to a number of things, could be impact a number of uh, into the sports domain, are impacting the number of entities, no? Starting from the single individuals, not the performer, in, even the, prof, the professional performer, or the team as a whole, or uh, who is going to manage or providing a support, a coach, for example, or um, also do not forget the other side of the part. Uh, there is someone that is going to play something, but there is also another a very large community that is going to watch that performer. And also, into the full ecosystem should be considered also the fun, for example. But also, please do not forget also the fact that the sports are not just a single individual exercise or activity. They are typically made within an environment, within a context, like a venue, like a stadium, and of course, also, there is also the sport for all of us, that those that are not professionals. So there are many other individuals and entities that you can think uh, when you are thinking about uh, applying um, technology, data, and analysis of data um, to, to, into the sport context. So there are a number of drivers no? into the, 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 for the sporting point of view and for the, for the fact this matter from the, even from the economic point of view for a corporation like IBM. There is a very huge movement around uh, what is so-called the Internet of Things, the ability to make sense of everything. No? Uh, other kind of things is that we are producing uh, data from a number of uh, point of views. Not only, let's say, movement data or data collected by our, let's say, movements or uh, our position, but also data that are uh, soft data, like uh, psychological data, for example. So uh, I will provide you some example in, in a while. But the, the, the second element here is that we have data from the full spectrum of an individual or a team. And another, um, let's say, th there is also the need not only to, about the performance, but also to involve uh, someone in doing, uh, let's say, the activity. It's, this, those someone are the fans. And, uh, and not necessarily the sport, uh, let's say, it just uh, until a few years ago, we are going just to, to share with uh, our fan during our sport activity, just the activity itself. Now, is it, something is changing. Even the fan, spectator, spectator uh, that are watching the, the plays, the games, could be, in some extent, involved into the activities. So there are a number of things that are uh, matured in other areas uh, that are, um, are providing now the technology background, the technology stratus, the technology backbone upon which we can build a number of uh, interesting things to renew, or as someone used to say, disrupt, disrupt if you want, this sporting and how sporting is even uh, told, you know, is, uh, is uh, um, the, the narrative of the sport um, and how the sport is, uh, action is shared with the others one. And those technologies are 
under the eyes of everyone and are typically used for everyday purposes, no? starting from cloud, mobile, wearable computing, uh, internet of things, are a number of things. It, last in order into the list are reported the artificial intelligence uh, derived uh, algorithm able to analyze also not only structured data but also unstructured data like uh, um, uh, textual information, visu visual information, um, uh, speech and so on and so on. But uh, so uh, from our point of view there are five major use cases if you want. Use cases uh, around which uh, the combination of data, the ability to analyze data uh, as providing, uh, are providing a good value. And also a business opportunity in this case, research plus a business opportunity. Of course, uh, I will, uh, for each of these I will provide some example. Um, let's, those use cases are starting, uh, uh, are starting uh, including, uh, let's say, the typically supporting system for uh, professional uh, uh, performance for professional treats that uh, I think the majority of the conference uh, the, uh, that it is, uh, I guess, typically uh, devoted, all supporting the team or coach. Uh, but also, there are also a number, another uh, interesting uh, number of use cases that are uh, use data and technologies to, to support other entities like the ones that I mentioned to you before. Let's start with a few examples. So from the supporting a professional in doing, a, let's say, a game, an activity, means uh, a number of, uh, let's say, things. And uh, things that we would like to, um, let's say, achieve. Of course, first of all, this is to uh, enhance the performance uh, uh, on or off the playing field. So also before, the performance before or after, uh, and so on. Uh, also, another important story is that uh, to leverage not only, let's say, data that are connected to the individual, but also exogenous data no? that are surrounding the individual that could uh, influence the performance itself. Think, for example, to the weather condition, for example, or the travel, no? the time uh, that could travel uh, uh, the, the, the performance, uh, could, uh, could, let's say, influence the performance, and so on and so on. Uh, for this perspective, let's see this very short movie. Serena Williams. Hi, Watson. You are a fierce competitor. I've heard that. I have analyzed your biggest matches. Oh, really? When down a point, you serve an ace 5.8 times more than other top players. You sound like a coach. I am not, but I can customize training programs based on biomarker data. Watson, that's pretty impressive. You might say I am the Serena Williams of cloud-based cognitive systems. No, I wouldn't go that far. So, uh, I started with this just to enter into, into the mood, uh, is how to support uh, from, the, let's say, from the data, from the technology uh, point of view, a professional. No? And uh, I think the, one of the best examples here is uh, those guys, a at least from the, let's say, the face point of view. And... Uh, uh, the, those, uh, the, those companies are providing, uh, let's say, uh, the, 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 this is uh, the site of RECO that is supporting a number of individuals to improve their performance. Uh, uh, they claim also, they supported also to uh, individuals uh, to, to obtain uh, 30 gold medals during the last few years. But uh, independently now, the, the kind of the work that these guys, this company used to do, it, it was what attracted uh, to me was uh, the, See the two columns here, no? The column on the left, that is the classic sport science, in which there are a number of disciplines and a, a number of activity that goes to improve. See the sport as a, let's say, as a science, a number of variables that you have to consider, no? To improve the, the performance individual. And on the, on the right side, was interesting that that column that put on the table at the same level, uh, to like um, a double phase of the same medal, a number of uh, tools or technology that should help to explore the left side. And those tool and technology include uh, classical, let's say if you want, the statistical modeling, optimization, things like that. But also interesting things are 
starting to emerge also new naming like uh, cognitive computing, deep learning, uh, let's say other kind of uh, techniques to analyze also the exogenous data I mentioned to you before. So uh, let's uh, provide just an example, like uh, as an, one of the, the examples that uh, uh, interesting to observe here is how we can, let's say, not only extract the data in real time from an individual, basketball in this case is the context, and to monitor the, the performance of an individual or as, a, as a team, like adding this, uh, some sort of data in a virtual way on top of the, um, on top of the screen. Uh, watch this, uh, this example. There is no sound, but that doesn't matter. The, see, there is some sort of sensors here on the, on the shoes uh, of the athletes, and you are able to see in real time a number of behaviors. Very, very simple, but straightforward. And this kind of information can be in real time, can be accessed by, from the professional point of view, from the coaches or from the athletes, but also some sort of a, a part, a fraction of those data could be also provided to the fan that are watching the game. Other example, if uh, the second element is uh, when uh, technology plus data supporting decision is coming into the coach hands. In these cases, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the kind of support that is required is to provide some sort of, uh, let's say, create a full picture of the players or of the team to support the strategy, to support uh, the ability also to, uh, have a, uh, to having also the ability to coach in a much more systemic way, uh, guarantee standard quality of the result. Uh, also from this, uh, I would like to provide, the, for this second item, I would like to provide a, this uh, example, a, a raptor in Canada uh, they renewed, if you want, the way in which uh, they are working in and building the strategy of a team with the, a very, very deep technology-based uh, environment. Watch this movie. IBM has a long history in the sports industry. Sports teams rely heavily on data and analytics to improve their team performance. What we've done here in a very much a first-of-a-kind solution and in collaboration with Toronto Raptors was to really collect and analyze data from a variety of sources, structured, unstructured, internal, proprietary data, and drive insights in an interactive fashion that could support Raptors management and make decisions. Our team at IBM IX work very closely with Raptors operations and management and staff to create a solution based on IBM cognitive platforms in a first-of-a-kind application called IBM Sports Insights Central. Our solution will really put player information on team management's fingertips. We created a collaborative, interactive environment that visualizes extensive amounts of data. The solution is really built based on an array of IBM technologies such as IBM Bluemix and IBM Watson solutions. We've also collaborated with a leading edge manufacturer of touch screens and touch tables called Multitaction. And what we really done is through an intuitive and interactive solution enable the Raptors management to have access to all aspects of player data in real time in a fashion that they could collaborate with each other and discuss a potential trade scenario or a draft pick and really help them make those uh, decisions. So it's like having a, some sort of a control room, if you want. No? Into this control room are not only merged information about individual uh, teams, uh, uh, but also the important story here is the, into the visualization of the information. That is another important story uh, that probably from the research point of view, typically not considering a lot. It says that, yes, we are going to be very smart in generating a number of insights, but those insights should be put into the hands of the people that probably in their life touch very few 
or are touching just a smartphone as a technology. So you have to distill, you have to, uh, very, very important story is about a language generation, for example, ability, not to distill information and put it inside the decision uh, point of view or recommendation in a, in, in a way that from the visual point of view can be consumed in a very, uh, let's say, easy way from those kind of end users. Uh, Another example, the third argument was, uh, is the, how to engage the, the fan, those that are going to watch the players. And here also there is a very, very huge room of, um, uh, of work. And uh, of course, in some cases, uh, is a much more US oriented, uh, uh, but also in Europe you have this, the same kind of attitude. A team, a sport team, a professional team is a company. No? It's a company that has to produce not only great result, but it's also to pr produce a return of investment for those that are investing in that company. Then they consider the fund not only just someone that is interesting to the sport, they consider the fund as consumers, customers. So there are a number of systems that are uh, are putting and targeting the consumers. They are the target uh, of some data distilled from the players, but at the same, at the same time, the, the very end objective is to involve, to engage those fans into the experience. As an example, uh, there, we did a number of projects into for various sports, for Wimbledon tennis, for golf, for uh, automotive, uh, in building this some sort of systems that are able to, these are dashboard, that they are not targeting in this case the coach, not the professions, but the fan. And a few data, um, a, par a portion of the data of the games is taken and distilled for the fan. And, and there are some sort of gaming of the game, some gaming activity that the fan the fan are able to do uh, and um, can be involved in, in gaming and in play with the other fan in around the game and so on. So there is some sort of huge movement how to extend the game experience beyond, if you want, the game tech, the game itself. Uh, watch this uh, very short movie. IBM provides every type of technology that would allow a fan anywhere in the world or on site to really experience the U.S. Open. We have a lot of really exciting things for fans all around the world, whether they're mobile or whether they're in front of their laptops. Slam Tracker, which is the way you can really follow everything happening at the tournament, has been updated with a new look, but also some new features. We've added social sentiment to Slam Tracker. So when players are on the court, we're actually tracking conversation on Twitter about those players and how much positive sentiment there is about the players during the course of the match. Keys to the Match really takes the technology we apply to businesses all around the world, predictive analytics, and applies it to tennis. We've taken eight years of data, well over 40 million data points of matches. And when they play each other here at the US Open, we know what things they need to do based on past history and data in order to succeed. Slam Tracker and Keys to the Match provide that data insight for fans so that they feel like they're even more knowledgeable on what is taking place in the match. How do we know what the next move should be for a player and how is that gonna enhance that player's actual overall game so that they might be able to win? We have another new use for analytics. Analytics is helping us to manage the cloud. We're managing the capacity of the cloud and how we have to dynamically scale it up and down during the course of the tournament using analytics. The analytics look at things like player information, player popularity, social sentiment, and determine whether there's going to be more demand or less demand so we can scale the cloud capacity according to that prediction. Mobile is key for us. We've got global fans who are clamoring for more and more US Open information and content. So we have a mobile-friendly site as well as a mobile app that we work together with IBM to build and create. And that's how our fans are getting player stats, news, photos, videos, all of that is available. 
So the interesting story here is just to, from the technical point of view, uh, it is important to mention uh, that um, uh, was a very interesting uh, at a certain point, uh, the lady into the interview said that uh, we are tra tracking social comments, not only just to, to read a very interesting, funny comment about the game and so on, but try to individuate the hype, the peak of interest to modulate the cloud, the infrastructure that is behind, that should, uh, let's say, uh, set up dynamically change in terms of workload in doing the analysis in, to, to reply in a real-time um, uh, real way to the end users. Since uh, we are considering this case for this kind of uh, games that are uh, in each fraction, in each instant, are connected uh, even millions of people watching the game. And, uh, and this fluctuation is quite high, passing from millions to tens of millions in a matter of seconds. So you have to modulate this some sort of uh, uh, workload ability to make these kind of things. And how to anticipate, how to forecast this demand, micro demand. In, in these cases, I use, we are using social media and uh, let's say the mood, if you want, in terms of uh, um, to, to understand not only sentiment positive or negative with respect to a player or a team, but to uh, derive insight that are able to um, use uh, the consumer to modulate the workload capability. And, and uh, the fourth argument was uh, moving, uh, let's say, the target from, uh, we started from an individual, uh, team, the coach, now let's, the fan, and the other argument now is to optimize, to considering, let's say, the venue or the stadium within which the, the game is played as a, a unique ecosystem. The game, the players, the fan, and so on. So uh, there is, during last uh, years, was a interesting name, like a smart of everything, and in this case was a smart building. So they are starting to build a interesting project that are quite huge. In this case, is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the project that I would like to show you uh, that's been realized in Atlanta is that the value is $1.5 billion. And to recreate the, the venue, the stadium, in, in this way. Atlanta is taking the fan experience to a whole other level with a new $1.5 billion stadium for the NFL's Atlanta Falcons and the MLS team Atlanta United. What we try to do in every design element when you walk through there is we try to look at it through the fans' eyes. What would they want? But that wish list has come with major construction setbacks and delays. Now, with the stadium set to open in three months, the Associated Press got an exclusive tour inside. This building is unlike any other sports entertainment building I've ever seen. It's a world-class building, and it's beautiful architecturally um, and engineering-wise. It's a beast. The Goliath hanging over the project, the retractable roof with its triangular steel pedals designed to open and close like a camera lens. The roof also includes clear, lightweight polymer material that can adjust its opacity to control light. That roof is massive with those big trusses and then the operable roof on top, so it's been a real puzzle to solve. Including how to stop the leaks. Watertight seals are being installed on the pedals. It will take eight weeks to place the fluorine-based plastic on them. But stadium officials say they are now 90% complete on a project that began three years ago and is behind schedule. Another feature will be the 360-degree video board they call a halo. This one board is 63,000 square feet of LED in a completely different immersive experience. Much of the exterior of the stadium is designed to allow views to the outside, including the Atlanta sky. So the point here, I'll stop a little bit of the video, but the, the element here to observe, the 360 degree video on top of the roof of the stadium is becoming a part of the game. People are going to watch, uh, let's say, the, the players, the teams, fighting one each other on the ground. At the same time, the target they, they have is to provide on top of that screen 
additional insight derived from the game to stimulate the audience. So deriving insight from the game in real time, like a narrative uh, to attach uh, and generate infographic, from the research point of view is, is quite challenging since they are dealing with the a key, um, a, a key video, not, not four key, a, a key, eight key video. And with the resolution with that an a key video, think that just to give you an idea, with the, a four key video resolution, you are able to uh, generate more than, more or less 200, 250 uh, gigabyte per second, uh, per, uh, per hour. With the eight key, you have to generate two terabyte of data per hour. But the kind of resolution that you have, you are able to extract from the visual point of view a number of things inside of very, very high granularity. And you are able to generate a number of insight from the visual recognition of the image that is going to generate in automatic a number of, uh, let's say, uh, narrative around the game. So another, uh, just uh, let's say, uh, element to, to put on the table in the research perspective, and not only, let's say, the optimization of the team of the scoring of things like that, but also to think exogenous data, like, uh, let's say, the visual or other kind of channels that you are probably, let's say, not considering uh, from the game perspective so far. Uh, Finally, the last topic is about a major trend, is uh, how to support not professionals in sports. And this is also will open the, the kind of, a, the, uh, let's say, to a project that we are doing with the Technogym, which is uh, one of the leader of a sport facility builder, in uh, creating something that could help someone uh, that is not a professional to generate insight and so on. So the main point here is that um, the, the underlying story here is that uh, everyone that is in, even in this room is more or less changing into something that is called the quantified self. There are some, several names of this uh, ten, trajectory uh, that is uh, very, very well characterized by this movie. Watch this movie. My name is Chris Dancy. I've been called the world's most connected human. I've been collecting information about my life, my body, and my environment for about five years so that I can search it, review it, and access it. If you take applications, sensors, devices, and services, between three and 700 are monitoring me at any given moment. My life has changed drastically over the last five years. As of today, I've lost 120 pounds. I can more easily focus on tasks. If I need to get a good night's sleep, I actually have little recipes to make that happen. Every morning and every night, I capture my blood pressure and my blood oxygen. Right now, I'm actually doing really good. I'm at 98%, so I'm actually talking a lot. <laughs> I've got a Lumo back on, and Lumo back allows me to actually keep track of my posture. The thing I really like about the house is, unless you're aware of it, most of the technology is not visible. I have my Nest thermostat over here. This is Rocco and Nordis, and they wear tag sensors that keeps track of their motion during the day. All through the house, I've got very, very small little cameras. Up here, we've got my uh, Netatmo, which is uh, just an outdoor weather station. I've got a cube sensor in here that monitors the air quality in the room, the humidity, how bright is it in the room, the ambient sound, why the TV too loud. This is my office. I started when I was 14 collecting little clippings and just anything I could find that represented the little pieces of my life. In here is where my data exoskeleton recharges. Everything goes in here that recharges that's not on my body. And like any good IT department, I have an infrastructure closet. There's probably about 60 terabytes of data backed up in here. So, this, of course, this is a trajectory, but just to think that, uh, let's say, this kind of technology will pervade, if you want, everyone, even during the sport activity. So, the main point is that how to leverage this kind of data to improve something, 
to, to improve the performance, to improve the well-being of an individual. No? So if you have uh, like the 60 terabyte of that guy, that's a <laughs> hyperbolic example, you can do a number of, uh, if you want, uh, uh, let's say, mining activity and uh, create some sort of, uh, let's say, models that are able to predict and provide some insight and even coaching you about good or bad things. So this is a, the, the, the last element that I would like to touch, and now I would like to close uh, and uh, giving the word to, um, uh, to Julia, that is going to show you one of the projects that we are doing in Italy, in this, as I mentioned to you uh, with the um, uh, Technogym, that is a, is, a, is a nice combination of sports plus health plus well-being or wellness. So this is an important combination that we have to take in mind. Not just sport for sport, but sport it is an important story. See, this, uh, the left uh, here is uh, what makes uh, us healthy. No? Is that the 50% that makes us healthy is, uh, depends from the, our behavior. The 20% from the environment and the 20% from the genetics, okay? The 10%, if you are lucky, you're not to, uh, to find the hospital when you are sick. But read the right side. Where we spend the money? We spend the 90% of the money just to solve the problem. Just to, we spend the 90% just to access to the medical services. So the sport in this case has been considered one of the major expansion area to even to reduce some cost from the other side in case of the health. So let's now, I would like to pass the, the voice to Julia. There's a goes, uh, she, she's going to talk a, about a, a project in, um, that we did in technology. Please, Julia. So, hi, everyone. Uh, I've been working with the Fabrizio team uh, and uh, IBM and to make this project for Technogym. Technogym is uh, one of the leader um, company producing uh, gym equipment and uh, machine for uh, gym and fitness center. And in the last years, uh, Technogym also invested in creating um, an experience, in offering an experience to the final customer. So uh, creating an application, which is called the My Wellness, Wellness Cloud based uh, on a combination of a mobile application and of uh, a mobile site in which uh, the user can track uh, how his training, uh, if it is improving, uh, etc. But uh, we try to manage, uh, imagine a way to merge together these two uh, hardware and software uh, components and to, uh, to find a new synergy. And the idea was to create a, a virtual coach. So, um, it's something like a, a more intelligent chatbot uh, that can help and follow the, uh, the user during his training, not only within the session, but also before and after. The idea is applying uh, cognitive, so um, using and, and leveraging data to um, provide the user with a personalized uh, experience. So based on uh, feedbacks provided by user during the training uh, and the, um, based on um, historic data, it is possible to uh, refine the, the way in which a, a training program is offered to a user and uh, made, make this program even more personalized uh, for, and suited to, uh, to its need. Uh, moreover, the, uh, this uh, virtual coach has also the, um, the goal of engaging the customers. So a person who is not used to going to the gym and to train uh, on a regular basis will be um, guided and helped and just uh, um, yes, guided by the virtual coach and stimulated uh, in order to make uh, wellness and training part of his daily routine. Besides the, uh, the guidance during the training session, these, uh, this architecture uh, also aims at providing um, a whole wellness experience. So we plan to integrate also uh, data and information coming from uh, nutrition, 
uh, and, uh, um, and eth uh, to the final user. Uh, in this way, he can, he will have the possibility to ask to the coach not only uh, how to train in, a, in the correct way uh, or how to perform correctly his exercise within the gym or at home, but also he will have the possibility to ask uh, the, tra the trainer uh, how should I eat um, in order to lose weight or how, how should I uh, behave, uh, uh, sleep in order to um, improve my, uh, my wellness and lifestyle. Uh, this uh, technology relies on uh, some services which are present within the IBM Bluemix platform. In particular, uh, the, the virtual coach uh, voice is um, based on a, a service called Conversation, which uh, relies on the uh, natural language processing uh, technology. Uh, in particular, uh, it is able to classify human language uh, class based on classifying intents and entities. And this um, uh, mapping allows also to um, move along the, uh, the tree, which, uh, which identifies the conversation dialogue with the, between the, the coach and the user. Uh, conversation is also defined as a scripted conversation manager in the sense that uh, answer are, um, are are coded within uh, the, the system, and so uh, it does not rely on a natural language generation um, module. But what make, makes this application different from other chat, chatbots or virtual coach uh, out in, uh, in the market is the possibility to integrate it with different services uh, which are present in the Bluemix platform. Uh, the first uh, way in which we can extend the virtual coach capabilities is to combine it with uh, a text-to-speech, a speech-to-text uh, modules, in which way, in this way, the user will be able to communicate uh, with, directly with his voice, with the coach, which is really an advantage, advantage in this situation because uh, the user will likely um, talk and inter, uh, inter, interact with the uh, coach during his training session. So he will not, not always have the possibility to tape and write uh, his message. Uh, moreover, uh, thanks to uh, the natural language understanding, it is possible module, it is possible to um, take information from scientific documents related to the wellness or medical or nutritional fields and use those uh, scientific uh, inputs and information to provide the user with targeting and useful information for his overall uh, well-being and, uh, and journey. So the project has already started. There are, there are some uh, references in the project you can find, uh, but we are still working to, to provide the, uh, and release this coach uh, as soon as possible. So we'll leave now the word to Fabrizio. Buon pomeriggio, good afternoon. I am Fabrizio Renzi for the Italian, uh, and nothing to do with politicians. And do not ask me 80 euros, but uh, uh, I work with politicians because I have a mission in life that is an open research center in Italy. That's, uh, that's what makes me, what keeps me at, up at night. That is open IBM research center in Italy that uh, I believe has a lot of effects also for university all over Italy and Europe. Let me tell you why. IBM invests uh, every year $6 billion in research and development. Huh? That is a lot, but is not enough because uh, let me close this. It is a lot, but is not enough. But is not enough for sure for what is happening at this moment in the market. I just just back from California and uh, was uh, astonished what's going on in that part of the world. But not only there; it's everywhere. The speed of change is absolutely incredible. So the traditional way IBM is approaching research. That is, we invest in our lab, but we do things inside our lab, and uh, that's all, is change. We continue to invest. We remain the major investment, investor in research in uh, IT space, and we want to keep going. We never, we never cut that part of IBM investment. And we have this lab around, around the world. But we believe uh, a lot in open innovation. That's one of the reasons I am pleased to, to be here when Marco Ferrante invited me here, and I am so pleased 
to be here. And the, the, the things can, and the way we interact with university can change. We can have uh, things like a professor in Marco department that is now working in our your town uh, lab. This is Professor Francesca Rossi. She is now there. She is an IBM employee. She is a little absent here. She is an IBM employee there. And she's leading all the IBM effort around uh, artificial intelligence and computer ethics. And we can have students from another university like Julia Plotti that uh, is working on projects. And uh, she just won in New York a great prize from Intesa San Paolo and the International Association of, uh, of uh, American Scientists on... <clears throat> on Watson and TJ Bolt and new, new technology. So that's, that's a new way to cooperate among IBM and university, and we are so pleased to be here with you. And on a topic like the one that Pietro, that is our chief scientist, as, as a strategist, has described to you, like sport and analytics, this is central on what IBM is doing in these days. So we are doing this. We in IBM Italy, we have created this uh, ecosystem. We call it R&B, Research and Business instead of R&D, because there is no, no time anymore within IBM for doing development, because the, the, the time is getting short. And we get, like, for a client like uh, Technogymi, she was mentioning before, you get the request, and you don't have time to develop a new product for them. You just have to get the research problem and start addressing it with the research solution. That's, that's what's happening in these days in the market. And this can be done with the industrial approach and with the traditional research approach. We have selected these areas to work on in this space, that is health, wellness, and nutrition, out of which sports comes from. We have decided that Italy is fantastic uh, for art. Nothing, I mean, you may, you may agree. I've seen this botanical garden is outstanding while coming over and while watching the Basilica of San Antonio. They are coming over. You may agree that even the not Italian, I believe you can agree on this. And when I have to position with the, the lab for within the IBM research labs in the world, I have to position what we have to have the mission in Italy. Of course, hearts is easy. It's an easy win for us to do. Food, they give us credit for food. I hope you will have a nice dinner yesterday and you will have tonight. And they give us credit for art. We, we are doing great things on social robotics as well. And uh, other cybersecurity is everywhere in the world, unfortunately. This is, uh, you call this captive market. I do nothing, and unfortunately, requests coming in this area. And energy and manufacturing, that's another area we have selected to work for research. We have several clients we are working with, the client and university all over the country, of which Padova, not because I'm here. <laughs> of course, I'm working also with uh, Venezia, and Professor Buiesi told me, say, Marco Ferrante, that I like him very much, the dean of the other university. But I'm working with all the, the, the Italian university, but Padova, you, you know, you are the largest in Italy. I believe second only to Roma, and, uh, or before Roma. Tell me before Roma, come on, we are making, before Roma, bigger than Roma. <laughs> and I mean, for sure, the oldest, we are Galileo, oldest than Roma, we are Galileo Galilei. We will see the chair later uh, during the Palazzo Bo visit. For the one of you not from Padua, you should not miss that. Eh? The anatomical uh, theater and the, the, cat, the cathedral of Galileo Galilei. Now, going back to, to finish on to position what, what Julia has presented to us and Pietro has presented. On one area, we'll not talk about, of course, the other, because this will be a long talk, but we'll talk about the area we have, the, Pietro has discussed at the beginning of sports and analytics. We have decided to focus on health, wellness, and nutrition. The reason I came 20 minutes late is because this morning I was in the initial discussion of the Technopole that tomorrow will be presented to the Italian Prime Minister for getting the, the, final, uh, the final approval. But the Technopole will be in Milano, but IBM will not play in Milano only. IBM, as you may see, will play all over the country. We'll get the money from the IBM Corporation, but we intend to work all over the IBM, the, the Italian country. <clears throat> Working on this space of health, wellness, and, wellness and nutrition, there is this uh, intersection between precision of care wellness and food and nutrition. You have seen in the last chart from Pietro that, uh, and this, as you may see, I am a, a living demo. Huh? <laughs> I was uh, on a congress in Dubai from Gruppo San Raffaele that is, was, it was on obesity. You say, you call me because I am a good uh, role model or for what? <laughs> 
and the, the, I'm doing a technogene project uh, just to say that I need to do exercise. That's, that's the point. I'm not a good demo, but, but as Pietro explained to us, for our health, sports is more important than pharma. We don't tell this to pharma company, actually we tell also to them, but <laughs> sport is by far more useful than pharma. Food is by far more useful for than pharma, and this far less, far is a lot more cost effective for the Italian government and for the private institution to, fo to have the people focusing on sport and food instead of focusing on pharma <laughs> for, for, for the in term of money. That's why Congress like this is so important. We have decided for four projects. One is on education. We took a humanitas hospital and with them they have university and with them we did a medical cognitive tutor. I call this in Italian Allegro Chirurgo. We have a joke that is uh, the, the happy surgeon. You, you have the student trying to make a diagnosis on simulated case, cases instead of real one. Huh? And that's, that's one case. We have applied with them with medicine. There are potential applications in other areas we can, we can discuss. But at the moment, we start with medicine with them. The second one, the third one Julia described, is the, the personal wellness trainer. She described that. The, on food, we are doing projects on uh, analytics around food, on the content of the fridge, on the, with sensors that smell if the food is going, getting corrupted, with the visual analytics. And the last one, I keep forgetting what we do for these uh, people that, with Alzheimer that, uh, that makes this project, the virtual trainer for uh, cognitive impaired patients, but I forget uh, where we make the, the, the project. Now we do it, we did it with San Giovanni Rotondo, as I say, all, all over the country, and this is very, very important as well, because uh, the memories of the old people are very old. I mean, dementia, as in my case, can get also earlier, but let's say you know, the old people, the, the, the loss of memory is terrible, and it's something that where, uh, where this kind of coach can play a major role. Like with techno gym, you can have a coach for keeping fit in terms of muscles, you can keep fit your brain as well. That's basically what this project is, is, is about. That's basically what I have to share with you. And uh, these are the people that have uh, worked on it. I just talked, uh, Pietro is our chief <laughs> scientist and strategist, and Julia is working with Silvia on, on the project and on some of them. Thank you very much for your attention on behalf of me and Pietro and Julia. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, we stay on the time, actually four, five, five, six minutes in advance. In case you have question, you want to ask question now or during the break, that's why I'm here. Ah, perfect, you have a microphone, yes. It's perhaps uh, best targeted at Pietro. Um, you mentioned about Come, many um, sensors and so on and the IoT. I mean, I, I, one thing that not many people seem to have addressed properly yet is security issues with the IoT. But, um, on the BBC just the other week, there was a program that's highlighted somebody had a... Uh, web-enabled kettle. I don't know why you'd need a web-enabled kettle, but he had one, and that proved to be a security risk for his whole network. Can you comment maybe about some of the security issues that we might have to be aware of with IoT for all these biosensors and everything that's possibly sensitive data that we might have about, about ourselves? Yeah, as a, um, Fabrizio told you, one of the, just a, a, a coincidence, uh, let's say, a research line of us is in the, about cybersecurity, you know? Cybersecurity has a, into, inter, in a, inter, in a if, if you intersect this with the sport, there's a number of uh, um, um, relations and a number of impacts. It's not only for the security and to preserve, let's say, the data that are collected from the wearable devices, uh, and then, uh, let's say, a number of things uh, connected also with the privacy, not only security, but privacy. But uh, if you are going, uh, let's say, beyond, I think about uh, coaching and, uh, let's say, models to predict and suggest someone in relation with the health, there is also very strong uh, let's say, impact of security also in preserving data and the kind of data that are used. For example, with the Under Armour, is a very big company in the US that is producing uh, uh, bands, uh, jacket, uh, sport, uh, wear. They are also considering uh, 
very sensitive data like health data. Not only, let's say, the data that are your, let's say, collecting during the exercise, but also other exogenous health data. So the main point here is, is how to store and where to store first in a secure environment and then are emerging, in the, for example, into the mark some, with some sort of emerging, uh, some sort of very secure cloud uh, proof of security, proof of privacy uh, repository. And second point, the main uh, element is uh, to try to think in terms of uh, design systems that are security by design from the beginning. So this means that uh, even when you are uh, dealing with a research product that has to deal with, uh, for example, data analysis, you have to also to think method that could uh, provide you uh, also a possibility to preserve security from the, the security and the privacy element or ethics of the individuals that you are, you are mining. So security is uh, as impacting every kind of things, and not only from the standard IT, but also from the research perspective. This is the, more or less the questions. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, it was stated several times that uh, exercise is cost effective, but the uh, healthy person is going to die too. So are you saying that the healthy person is going to be on medication for a shorter period of time than the the uh, Unhealth. The person who exercises is going to be on medication for a shorter period of time than the uh, person who doesn't exercise. Is that what you're saying? If, if I may, and after I... On the general term, it was funny because this morning I was uh, on this um, launch of the Technopole, and there was there the Italian Mr. Boeri, that is the head of IMSS, that is the... Social Security Agency of Italy, I say, what in the hell is this man doing here? Because, you know, he takes care of the people when they retire. Huh? And this was a very interesting discussion on longevity, health, uh, and uh, the age, how much time you stay on medication, or you connect. Yes, that's an interesting point. The other interesting point in terms of social impact of what's going on in these days is that uh, in Italy, and also this is happening elsewhere, but in Italy they are starting very heavily, especially in some regions like Lombardia, but also in others, uh, to pay the, the hospital, to ask the hospital to specialize in diseases. You make uh, cardiology and diabetes, you make uh, tumors, you make this, and they will pay you for the patient not anymore for a number of uh, treatments you make to him, but I will pay you by the health of the patient, let's say in this way. It's a different way to measure the outcomes. It's a medicine, it's a ba outcome based medicine. That is, the, the medicine, you pay the, 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 the things that makes the treatment based on the outcome. So, in general, in this way, you will make it more favorable economically for the system to increase on sport and on good nutrition than to increase on pharma, as you may imagine, as, as for our discussion. So this is on the social, on the social side. It's what's going to happen? Huh? What's happening? I don't know, Pietro, if you want to add. Just to add uh, something about uh, the prescription of the sport, if you want. Yeah. The prescription uh, of a sport activity. Um, it, there are a couple of examples. One is uh, just uh, Fabrizio mentioned the diabetes, no? And there is, in particular, there are some form of diabetes, like uh, it's called the pre-diabetes, that are those that has uh, some uh, uh, glucose level between uh, uh, um, 110 and uh, 128. That are those in the morning. There are those that are not into the diabetes stage, but are is some sort of a good. Uh, explode the diabetes stage in some, somehow in the future. And the, the range, the variability, is something like, uh, could it be as soon as one year or uh, could it be also 10 years? And the only prescription that is typically, uh, the, among others, that, but the most important is to have uh, at least 150 minutes per week of activities just to reduce the probability more than 50% to have the explosion of the pathology, okay? So one of the discussion is that uh, even to, let's say, 
to someone that is in the middle of not having a pathology in a very, let's say, very big way, but to make or not sense to prescribe the exercise. The second example, from the medical perspective, another interesting story is, for example, about insurance companies that similar, in a similar way to the, well, the, the social well organization, but in this case is a private insurance. There are, there are a couple of them uh, that I know. They are already exploring the fact to have some sort of a black box uh, on top of the individual. And the individual started with a fare, uh, a premium, that is, is, mean, is a discounted. Uh, times to times, is doing exercises. So is it doing movement. So more you, uh, you go to the gym, more your steps you do, less I have to pay to the insurance. So there are a number of examples in which, uh, uh, these are just a few examples in which uh, the, the sports is entering in the window, from another window if you want, from another not traditional door that is sport for the sport, but sport for the health. And if I don't make exercise, in short, I uh, will make also a demon in the diabetes uh, congress. <laughs> They're tightly connected, that's what my friend in diabetes association keeps telling me. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks to the organization, this was... Uh,